JD, back for more of the Blonde Boys Power Half Hour. Ah, dubbed the old up-tempo days. Uh, the, the new bloods in the Big 12. There are eight new teams. If you've got a city council, you don't want 50% of your council brand new. If you got a school board, it's the same thing. If you got any anything, if you got voters, if eight of them are brand new, things can get real weird real fast. And now you have some power programs like BYU. You've got a UCF with a claimed national championship who has the best recruiting class in 2024 in the Big 12. Are these eight teams, your, your Arizona, your Colorado, you throw in there too, in a position to overtake that hateful eight that's left behind? I think it's a fascinating situation. And I don't know that we get one answer, you know, going forward just every single year. Like I think there'll be yeah. runs where Utah's probably atop the Big 12 and UCF with their position in recruiting. Like they're going to be able to draw a lot of the top talent. We're seeing them do it right now. So overthrow is maybe not the word I would use, but I think they mesh well. Like I think with adding these eight teams, a lot of it in my mind is about keeping pace with the SEC and with the Big Ten and not necessarily overtaking them or being, you know, the top conference in the country, but it's about relevancy. Like knowing if I go to the Big 12 and I'm a recruit, I'm going to have a chance to go play on ESPN, go play on Fox. I don't have to worry about playing on Apple TV plus or whatever other like off brand kind of streaming platform. We're going to be working with it. We know with my college football game. So I think it's about relevancy, which is why you added these teams. And I think both Utah, BYU, I mean, you see, if we go down the list here, a lot of teams that I think are going to provide a really good product when it comes to that Saturday afternoon. I, I, I'm going to pivot a bit because where you just where you just went is something that I pondered on a lot. I don't ever hear from high school recruits. I'm going to play in the Big Ten or the Big 12 or the ACC. But you always hear I'm going to play in the SEC. Does conference affiliation only truly matter for these kids? I know ESPN and TV certainly matters, but does conference affiliation only matter in the SEC? You know, I think so much is made of the SEC brand. And I don't say that in a derogatory way. I just, I just think they have done a really great job making sure that people know that they are the top conference, that they've had this many national champions, they've had this many draft picks, and they have a really rich history and all those things. And so I think there's a certain amount of pride in the southeastern region of the United States with their high school football and the culture that goes into it. I mean, same thing in the state of Texas. And I think that's another conversation in itself, but I think the way they've branded it to, Hey, you come to the sec, you're gonna have a really good chance to go play in the NFL. I think, I think that's really what it's, what it's about in my mind. Like Ohio state has that same developmental piece of it. Michigan has the same developmental piece of it, but they've done a great job making it. No, no, the brand of the sec, you come play against the best, you'll have a chance to go pro. And I think that's what a lot of these kids look at Drake when they do have a chance to go pick a college, like where can, I go to get developed and have a chance to go play pro with that the sec here's your chance to play with the best the big 12 can't say that the big 10 can't say that because the sec has it they own it and they they wear it well if you're the big 12 then what is your new brand what do you preach to recruits what do you preach to media outlets when you bring in these new eight teams and have 16 strong I think the story is kind of unwritten which is kind of the exciting part about it like there is no set you know, story that the big 12 has, has to walk through now, like Kenny Dillingham, I heard him on a podcast not too long ago and he's the head coach for Arizona state. Mm -hmm. And they were talking to him like, Hey, why'd you take the head job at ASU? Why Arizona state? Why was that right for you? And he's like, why not Arizona state? And it's kind of a microcosm. I think of, of where the big 12 is at right now. Like what is holding the big 12 back from going and competing for national titles, especially with the, the conference, uh, excuse me, ex with the college football playoff expansion, rather like they're mm -hmm. going to be in the dance every single year. They're going to have an automatic bid. And Kenny Dillingham, his argument was like, if we stack four top recruiting classes at Arizona state, we're going to have a chance to go compete for national titles. And it's, it sounds funny when you say it out loud, but I think it's absolutely true. Like those Georgias, those Bamas, Ohio States, they're so good because they've stacked it on the recruiting trail. And so for the Big 12, if you have a couple of schools, I think get out in front of this and find a way to have some national prominence, that's going to just bolster the brand. And I think it'll give them some momentum. Let me, I, I don't, let's back up a little bit here. Don't blow hot air up my bird dogs right now. Are you saying the big 12 has a shot at winning national championships in college football in, in even the next decade? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's extremely possible. I mean, heck, you look at Texas this coming season in a smaller playoff, and I know they're not going to be in the Big 12 long term, but like there is nothing holding the Big 12 back from taking a shot at it, which I think is kind of one of the things we talked about with college football playoff expansion. Like you want to get in the dance. Okay, great. When you get there, like we can't help you. When we get yeah. there, when we put you on the field against Georgia, like you got to hold up your end of the bargain. But to be on the field is all you should ask for. I mean, TCU, we saw them this past season. They were five and seven in 2021. Did a bunch with the transfer portal, got the right head coach in there, made a run. I mean, they got drug in the national title game, but even so, like yeah. they were on the field. And so my big thing, if I'm a Big 12 fan, get us in the door, get us on the field, give us a chance. And then if we can't do it in four quarters, like that's on us. All we need is to get in the door. And so there's nothing that's, you know, sort of blocking that door for them in my mind. And especially with the playoff expansion, that's going to make it even more possible. So I think it's possible. Um, is it an uphill battle? Absolutely. But I think there is no reason there is, there is no physical force keeping the big 12 from getting that done. Before we move on to the three biggest issues facing the Big 12 right now, J.D., when you, when you look at this conference from a football standpoint, you and I were in town when Baylor men's basketball won a national championship, and yep. now two years removed from that, it does nothing for expansion. Football pushes the needle. The ACC has three brands in Miami, Florida State, and Clemson that are much bigger than anything the Big 12 has with these 16 teams. Is this conference, though, with the way that Florida State has acted, trying to pull apart from the ACC, does it feel like the Big 12 is in a good spot to make this thing a power three? I think they are. I think they are. And like you said, that domino with Clemson and Florida State is an enormous one. I mean, Drake, I don't know in what world this happens, but imagine if the Big 12 were to land a Florida State and Clemson, like somehow, some way, Brett Yormark gets in his bag and finds a way to get it done. Like we talk about the Big 12 in a completely different light. And, and right now, like the Pac-12 is kind of an afterthought. The ACC is a big question mark. Like the this conferences we're talking about being in a – somewhat powerful position are the big 10, the sec and then the big 12 keeping pace. Like just even from sheer quantity, having 16 teams in your conference that are all from the power five level and having the reach now to the West coast. Like I really, they're, they're doing a great job just keeping pace. Are they far out ahead of the sec and the big 10? Not necessarily. Are they, are they, you know, right, right there with them? I don't know about that, but they're definitely in the race. Yeah. JD, look, not everything is rosy. Here at Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day.